This video is made possible by Spencer Shipley at Packy Webb Ford in Downers Grove, Illinois. Spencer is dedicated to finding the right car for you in the quickest time possible. Give him a call or contact him with the information up on the screen or found in the description below. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2006 Chrysler Crossfire Convertible Limited. Up front is a 3.2 liter V6. Down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Crossfire for a couple of different reasons. Last year, I actually reviewed a Chrysler Crossfire Coupe. It was automatic, it was a hard top, of which this car is neither. So I'm excited to compare and contrast the manual transmission to the automatic, the hard top to the convertible, and things of that nature. But before we get back to the rest of the video, if you would like to help support the channel, I do have a website, zachpradle.com, where you can submit your vehicle, you can check out blog posts, I post behind the scenes content of what I'm filming, what I'm excited for, things like that, as well as I do have merch available if you'd like to buy stickers, shirts, hats, whatever it might be. So please go check that out. Or if you'd like to submit your vehicle via email, pradlereviews at gmail.com. Let's get back to that 3.2 liter V6. Well, it makes 215 horsepower, which isn't anything crazy. However, right off the bat, this is where you first start to notice that this is a Mercedes product. This 3.2 liter V6 is a Mercedes engine because this car is essentially an SLK. Now, in my last Crossfire review, I got that mixed up with just the SL. This is actually the SLK, which is the smaller chassis, but it is Mercedes nevertheless. Now, this was the only engine offered in the Crossfire. However, you could get the SRT6 Crossfire, which actually supercharged that V6, which is really, really cool. And one day I will film one of those, hopefully on a nice day, because today it's snowing. The last Crossfire I reviewed, it was pouring rain. Some of the worst rain I've ever seen. So I guess third time will be the charm for the SRT6. But let's get to that manual transmission. This has three pedals and a shifter. Well, it's a very interesting transmission. While it technically is named the Chrysler manual transmission, it's actually, again, from Mercedes. Mercedes builds this for Chrysler in Stuttgart, Germany. This is also shared with the Dodge Nitro, if you remember those, or most notably up until 2018, it was in the Jeep Wrangler. So the JKs and the TJs of the early 2000s, those manual transmissions, same as this one. That being said, I don't like it. It feels like a very economy, very heavy duty transmission when this is supposed to be sort of a luxury coupe, a more sporty vehicle. I struggle to get it into first and second gear. It doesn't have that nice clickiness of like a Honda or really any foreign transmission. This feels very American to me, and American manual transmissions don't feel good. They're very numb. Think of sticking a broom handle into a box of gravel. That's the kind of feeling I'm getting here, which is, in all honesty, a huge shame because I thought that this car with the manual transmission would be so much better. It would be a night and day difference, and I'd fall back in love with the Crossfire, but no unfortunately not. And I think the shift knob has some to do with that as well, which can be switched out. But we'll talk about that with the interior. All right, we're not going to do an acceleration test here, but we are going to try to just row through the gears. Second gear. All right, maybe it's uh, Excel. <laughs> it is quick. It's a fast car. And actually the manual makes it a lot more fun to drive. However, when it actually comes to shifting those gears, it's kind of annoying, it doesn't feel great, it's not like click into place, it's like ugh, second, ugh, third. I feel like someone poured pudding down the shifter bezel. I don't know, I just really dislike this shifter and I think that that's really a shame. One thing about this transmission, however, is that it doesn't use regular gear oil in the transmission. Because it actually has bronze synchronizer collars inside the transmission, you have to use Chrysler approved transmission fluid, which will make working on this car X amount of times more annoying. We'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. Last but not least, of course, the Crossfire is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. There's a lot of Chrysler and also Mercedes in here. 
which is kind of interesting. In front of me, I have three main gauge pods. On the left, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. Then I have my speedometer in the middle and my tachometer to the far right, which I actually use in this car. The gauges look old timey. They look like an old pirate ship navigational compass to me. I don't know why. The steering wheel doesn't have any physical buttons on it. I do have a cruise control stalk around the back, but that is it. And it is very plasticky. However, once you step into the Crossfire, you do get hit with the old German nostalgia of melted crayon scent throughout the interior. This is very typical if you're unaware of BMWs, Volkswagens, and Mercedes of the early 2000s. It's just the plastics that they made have aged in such a way that all the cars smell like melted crayons on the inside. Off to the left of me, I have a vent as well as my headlight switches, fog lights, things like that. And on the door, I just have my latch to get in and out and a giant bar for grabbing the door. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and then the climate controls themselves. I do really like the fact that there is a actual crossfire used for the recirculating button. Chrysler did not have to go out of their way to do that, but they did and I appreciate that attention to detail. But this is all very typical Mercedes. And we have a very standard radio, nothing to see here. I do have CD, which is kind of nice and some favorite buttons, but nothing else to write home about. And then we have all of our Mercedes buttons, like the heated seats which is very nice but we also have the spoiler up and down very cool that you can toggle that spoiler traction control off hazard switch lock and unlock our towing mode because the, yes this is a mercedes and the alarm will go off if it is raised into the air without hitting this switch and then of course the heated seat for the passenger out in the middle of nowhere i have my airbag turn on and off button for the passenger and a 12 volt outlet off to the other side and i have this little pop out ashtray not sure if i'd use it but at least I get it. And then the shifter itself. Like I said, this ball on top of the shifter is really slippery, really numb. I can't really get a good grip on it. I don't know. I just, I don't grip polished knobs all that well. I'm sorry, that's just the way I am. To the left and right, I do have my window switches, obviously for the power windows in the car. And down below, I have my mirror adjustments and my convertible top settings. So I will pull over here. I always get convertibles <laughs> on like the worst weather days. When I reviewed an NC Miata in December, it was snowing while I was filming that, and it's snowing again today. I don't know, I just have terrible luck with convertibles, but let's put the top down. Why are you yelling at me? Okay. Okay. So you have to manually pop, twist it, pop it up, and then it'll automatically do the rest. Oh, it is getting cold very quickly. Oh, God. And just like that, we're in a convertible. This actually offers a really great open air experience. This is really cool. I'm going to start putting it back up. Um, just because I'm getting very cold, um, but it is really, really great. I would drive this thing with the top down, with the manual all day long. I think it could actually be a really fun cruiser in that respect. Um, I would definitely, I think I'd take the convertible over the, the hard top. I think it just adds that nice little extra um, sort of flair, if you will. So should be finishing up here pretty soon. Lower that back down. And then I have to twist, Ugh. pull down, lock, and then we're good. And then I can uh, roll up the windows like so. There we go, power top operation. Then I do get a sad excuse for a cup holder. This is not going to fit the big friggin' bottle. Here's the test, bada bing, bada boom. Nope! Now we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are heated, which is very, very nice. I'm pleasantly enjoying on a day like today. They look nice and presentable. They do look very, very 2000s. They look very dated, but you know, it was a mid 2000 car. What do you expect? We don't have back seats, thank the baby Jesus. So let's talk about the trunk because the trunk is actually different. Because of the convertible top, the regular coupe is a hatchback, but this is actually a regular trunk, so let's go talk about that. All right, so we're on the back of the Chrysler Crossfire convertible. Now, like I said, the regular one, I'll show it here, actually has a hatchback that fully opens. So this is a completely different trunk design, and when you open it, that's it. 
This is smaller than a Miata trunk. Chrysler should borderline be sued for false advertising even having a trunk. This has to be one of the smallest, most abysmal trunks I have ever seen in a road car. It just, I'm literally just standing here. I don't even know what else to say. Oh God. Now we got to talk about the looks and I really do love the look of the Crossfire in a sort of my five-year-old's hand drawing kind of way, if that makes sense. It's ugly. That's the thing. But like, it's like a cool ugly. It's an interesting ugly. And I think those uglies have their place in the world. It is finished in black, but I swear to you at one angle I saw purple. I, I thought so, but maybe not. Anyway, let's get to my final thoughts here on the Chrysler Crossfire Limited Convertible, Convertible Limited, whatever. I will breeze over what I said in last video, in case you haven't seen that one, but I highly recommend that you do watch it. I like the Chrysler Crossfire. I think that it's super unique. I played a video game in the 2000s where you could make your own movies and it was sponsored by Chrysler. And so I loved playing with the Chrysler Crossfire in the movie settings and, and things like that. The issue comes with maintenance because I've had friends that own these and Chrysler dealerships won't touch them because they say that it's all Mercedes parts. And then you bring it to Mercedes and they say, nope, those are Chryslers. So you get stuck in maintenance limbo and a lot of people got upset that I said that in the last video because they have a buddy that'll work on it or they have a independent European shop that'll work on them. You have to understand that not everyone has access or knows someone with an independent European shop. I happen to know of one here in town. I don't know them personally. So I guess I would just have to try my luck. And that's the worrying thing about buying a Crossfire this day and age. Originally, when you bought one back in 06, the Chrysler dealer would work on them because they had to. But nowadays, it's a big issue. However, if you want my full thoughts on that, you can check out the other Crossfire video. What do I think of the manual convertible? <sighs> I wanted it to be so much more. I wanted it to be so much cooler. It is definitely fun. When you get on it, you feel the torque of the V6 in a little sports car like this. This has six cylinders, you know, decent amount of displacement for a little car like this. You really do feel it in a straight line. Driving it feels great. Love it. But the actual shifting feel, I've just driven cars that are way better. Way, way better. Like I keep saying, it feels like the transmission is full of sludge. It doesn't feel exact. It, it, it's, it's just frustrating because I really wanted to love this car. I really like them. I think they're unique and different and such a cool piece of automotive history from the mid 2000s, Mercedes and Chrysler coming together. I mean, who would have even thought, but it just falls short. Maybe the SRT6, maybe that'll change my tune on the Crossfire. I really hope so. If anyone has an SRT6 that they would be willing to let me review, I would love to come out. I will come out to wherever you are because I really want to get that under my belt and see if maybe that can save the Crossfire name for me. I love the idea of this car. I love the thought of it, but the execution, I, I just can't agree with. Well, I want to give a huge thank you to Spencer Shipley at Packy Web Ford for letting me take out the Crossfire Limited Manual Convertible. He's absolutely awesome. If you're looking for a used car or new Ford here in the Chicagoland area, Spencer Shipley should be the first person you contact. Let him know what you're looking for. Maybe it's not a Crossfire. Maybe it's not even a Ford product. Let him know. Packy Web has tons and tons of used cars from every make and model. They will find the right vehicle for you. And he has been absolutely awesome. Helping out Spencer is helping out me, and that is greatly appreciated but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys have owned a crossfire currently have a crossfire please let me know in the comment section down below viper dude down in florida i know you had a manual one as well so i'd love to hear your thoughts but i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it take care guys